So I'll, uh, I'll just, I'll manipulate these things. Go down below and take a look at what they actually look like. Uh, this will be the, the shifter on the transmission. And this is useful because today, you know, our cars are, are push-button things. Um, whereas a parking brake used to be mechanical. And we don't have so many mechanical systems, but all the systems on this boat are mechanical. And, uh, and so is our transmission. That's forward gear, neutral, reverse, neutral. You could see the uh, lever moving. And now you know at least what the connection is between what your hand is doing and what the transmission is doing. And you can see the throttle movement. Full throttle, Alex. And then back to straight up and down, which is uh, this boat about 1400 RPM, maybe less. And then back to idle cutoff, which is how we stop the engine on this boat. Okay, yeah, I see that. So, Al, you notice that um, we're probably going to only, we'll only use about half the Genoa today because it's blowing 16, 17. And I've already set the the uh, jib fair leads back because the, the uh, strain on the line to the clue of the Genoa uh, will be a correct angle here. If it was a full Genoa, we would move the car all the way back to about here. Does that make sense? Yeah. That ought to bring back the good old days, Al. Yeah. Do you notice any difference in the size of their sails? Yeah, they're so much smaller. They are smaller. Oh, they capsized. But as we know, that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. It's like a sailing class, doesn't it? Yeah, I need to sail a laser again one day. And what we'll do, right, as we said, is we'll start off at least with our Genoa jib just at the 50% mark, and that'll cut our sail area, our foresail area in half. We'll go from 420 square feet to only about 200 and 220. And does that actually slow down your speed? No, uh, because if the boat is overpowered, it can only go so fast. This boat, somewhere around seven knots is hull speed. And everything else is just to look good, <laughs> right? Deploy the Genoa halfway. Okay. You can hold this course, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to put uh, four wraps on the big Jenny on the Genoa drum now because there's a little bit of breeze out there. that I can maintain control of it, you know? Right. So what's your guess as to the wind speed? I'd say, uh, 15. 15. I don't see too, too many white caps. There's some. You can feather up a little bit into the wind. Up into the 
behind is your is your brake pedal. Right. It reduces the helm and it reduces all the problems. There's a big wave right here. What's your anemometer say? It says 17. Yeah, just what we predicted, right? Right, yeah. How's it feel? Feels good. You can hear that bump when a wave hits the side of the boat. Yeah. Sometimes that means you're about to get soaked. So it's only blowing 17. We're on a beam reach with huge scallops in our mainsail. I'll fix that next time we tag. Lovely day. To keep going a straight line on a beam reach, we can probably adjust the sails better, but basically. Sailing in waves, uh, you want to go in a straight line, it takes a certain amount of effort from the helmsman. Since you want to tack and go over on the other tack, uh, I suppose you want me to do something with the traveler. put in a reef or whether we need to get rid of those scallops uh, because it's blowing 17 and we're doing okay with the half of the channel. Well, let's put in the reef just for the fun of it and it'll certainly make uh, the rest of the steering easier, right? Yeah. So what is our speed right now? Our speed is uh, a six, six and a quarter. Six and a quarter, six and a half. Good. I don't think we'll slow down much at all. I do before reefing, with slab reefing, is to assure myself that this line here, which is the first reef, the blue one, is, is correctly positioned on the boom, which it sort of is, that's fine. That's the second reef that goes up to the higher. We won't be using that one, just the first reef. What's going to happen is that the sail is going to go down from to the first reef, which is this line of Pringles across the belly of the sail. And out forward you can see the downhole, the first downhole, there's the second reef downhole, we won't be using the first reef downhole. So the sequence of this is going to be slack off the main sheet so that the sail luffs. Then we're going to lower the sail using the main halyard. Then we're going to pull down the downhole number one, which is here on the deck. And then we're going to pull down and crank in reef number one, which is the blue line over there. And when we've done those four things, we should have a reef to sail. It's hard to keep your footing when the boat's doing this. So what you do is to slow everything down. There's no rush. It's a beautiful day. We'll take this in stages. If something doesn't work out just right, we'll just fix it. But one thing we'll make sure we don't do is allow ourselves any obvious fouls that we could have stopped by thinking a little bit ahead. 
and of course, by putting in a reef, we'll automatically solve the problem of the scalloped loft. Make sense? Make sense. Just got splashed? What? Did yes. you just got splashed? Totally splashed. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> you know, this doesn't happen in golf. <laughs> it does not. Well, I think once you get going on you know, a day like this, everything is fine, but it's, it's the maneuvering and the raising and lowering of the sails. The primary difference is that everything flaps. And there's more noise. That's basically it. And it becomes critical now, only now that we do everything the same way. You know that when we hold on to, when we attach the halyard to the top of the sail, even when there's no wind at all, we don't let it go. Our habit is to always hold on to the halyard because if you let it go, when it's windy, it blows out that way and you can't get it anymore. You really can't get it anymore. And equally true for the winches. Those three turns that we put on routinely when there's no wind, even the folded sails. We also put three on in heavy air, or maybe even four. The whole idea is to sail the boat when there's hardly any wind, just as you would when there's lots of wind. We always do things in the same sequence, in the same way, so that we have a baseline for how to operate the boat when it's windy and it gets confusing and loud and you can't hear your girlfriend. That's great. Since I'm at the helm, I'll jive it. People are so afraid of driving boats. Uh, I think they've been taught that uh, the boat will explode if the boom swings across on a pose. And they've been told that they always have to pull the boom amidships. Yeah. And yet, on a modern boat, if your boom can't swing amidships, then you got a problem. We've got a reef in, which makes it even easier to do what some people call a flying jibe. But there's a trick to it. The other way to do it is to continue through the jibe so that the boom doesn't slam over. We call it J jibe sometimes, which goes like this. Prepare to jive, coming over. Now I spin the wheel, so that by the time the boom gets there, it doesn't 
hardly less at all than you have to bear off. But that's the only way single-handers can really do it at sea. And sometimes it does take a while to get back on course. Well, well done. Here's to, uh, I don't know if you're really ready or ready for what, but here's the, the father-daughter sailing team. Aye, aye. Cheers. Here's to it. <laughs> this is video three of our sails together, moving up to a larger boat. What, what's left? What, where do you feel? You are at this point. Uh, I feel I feel comfortable. I feel I feel much better than I did starting this. Uh, I don't know if I am ready to go out alone at this point, but I can certainly grab a few friends and take the boat out and uh, you know go for a sail, and then I think I can get us back in to the to the slip. <laughs> I had to get a. a first class or 101 certificate or whatever it is called to charter boats myself 20 years ago but I was already an experienced sailor but if somebody wants to charter a boat in the Caribbean or, or, or just around the Chesapeake um, this is I think your level of knowledge is enough to certainly to certainly do it but what concerns would you have to further explore before you were really ready are you ready now uh, yeah, I feel I feel good about the um, understanding the engine and coming in and out of slips and um, and I feel good about the lines and and how you know sailing actually works with the wind angles and understanding you know how to get where I want to go the most efficiently. Um, I'd say I wouldn't be comfortable at this point with just the leftover unknowns of possibly sailing without, you know, a captain or sailing with just friends. But I feel that, you know, on a whole, on this boat and this size boat, I feel pretty good. Well, you're right, it's bigger than a laser. It weighs 16 or 18,000 pounds, it's 38 feet long, and it can be a handful. But you did great. And if you ever want to take this boat out, I'd love for you to invite me. Well, thank you, Dad. That's great. I'm ready to do it. Uh, thanks for your expertise. Thanks for showing me the ropes, literally. And thanks for a whole lifetime of sailing lessons and, uh, and being with you on a boat. It's, it's been my privilege. <laughs>